Venus, planet Earth's twin. And like all sets of twins, one of them is always evil. On Venus, the ground is hot enough to melt your feet. The sulfuric acid rain will dissolve your face. The air temperature will fry whatever's left. And the atmospheric pressure will crush you as if you were trying to scuba dive to the Titanic. Uh, other than that, yeah, just like Earth. Unlike the other rocky planets, Venus spins backwards, opposite from the direction Venus orbits the sun. Don't expect to see a sunrise in the west, however, because the cloud cover is so thick and reflective that despite being so close, the sun will be difficult to spot, assuming the planet hasn't burned your eyes away, which it totally would. In addition to spinning backwards, Venus also spins very slowly. One revolution takes 243 Earth days, or roughly 243 Earth days longer than any lander has lasted on the surface of Venus. The surface is nearly 900 degrees, Hot enough to melt tin, lead, zinc, and overall ruin your day. But don't expect the month-long nights to get any relief. The thick atmosphere traps in all the heat and circulates around the planet quickly enough to keep the entire surface at this insane temperature. The dense atmosphere guarantees that anything but the largest asteroids on a collision course will burn up long before they reach the ground. This means the surface of Venus is oddly devoid of any small or medium-sized craters, like those seen all over Mercury or Earth's moon. It's got plenty of huge ones, however, the kind that definitely would have killed any dinosaurs tough enough to survive on Venus. So, why would anyone want to go to Venus, given that it clearly wants everyone to be very dead? For starters, Venus is often the brightest thing in the night sky other than the moon. Visible only around sunrise and sunset, its shocking brightness causes some to mistake it for a UFO. You know what they say, anything can be a UFO if you're bad enough at identifying stuff. Part of this brightness is because Venus is very close to planet Earth and its atmosphere is very reflective. The Dense clouds reflect about 75% of the light hitting the atmosphere. This is similar to those nice puffy clouds on Earth or fresh snow cover, but even brighter because the sun is much closer to Venus. And you know humans, they want to go to anything bright and sparkly, even planets that want to melt everything. But not everything about Venus is quite so deadly. Getting there from Earth is easier and faster than going to Mars, meaning communications and resupply can happen more quickly on average, and launch windows occur more often. A year and a half between supply runs isn't exactly Amazon Prime speed, so try not to forget anything when you go. The surface of Venus might be totally inhospitable, but the thick atmosphere opens up a possibility for awesome sci-fi floating cities. About 30 miles up, the atmosphere is roughly the same pressure as Earth, with temperatures between freezing and about 120 Fahrenheit. That's quite a range, so pack for four seasons, obviously. The 10% lower gravity would mean you walk a bit springier than you're used to, but it's far more like Earth than anywhere else. Oh, except for all the sulfuric acid, don't forget that part. Floating a city on Venus would be easier than on Earth. The atmosphere is mainly CO2, which is considerably denser than Earth's atmosphere. A balloon full of Earth air would float just fine. No helium needed. This means the lifting gas could be the same as your breathing gas. You could live inside the blimp without suffering from jokes about your goofy high-pitched balloon voice. Now that sounds fun and all, but you won't catch me on the next flight there. I say send the robots first. Next up, Earth, the only place in the system where you can get a decent sandwich. 